I'm Igil Steele, I'm with ELR Precision, and welcome to the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 6-24 by 50. Let's do this. Well, the uh, range officers just said that there's no more shooting, so so that kind of sucks, but that's the way it is. All right, all the shooting video of me lying at the range shooting with uh, with a weapon with this scope mounted. I'm just gonna try something new because. I've been reviewing my videos and thought, well, you know what, it doesn't really matter if I have the the video of me shooting the thing, uh, or shooting a rifle where this is mounted. Let me know if, if that gives you something to see me shooting the rifle, because this time, as you see, the range was closed before I could get to shoot it at the, uh, at the one mile. Mark, but I've been shooting a lot with this scope and I've used it on several occasions on that same rifle. We were just shooting a lot of film on that day, but didn't get to fire shots with this one from that rifle on that day. Um, we've used it a bunch and um, we have all the same experiences with it as we do with the others. We just don't have any video of, of me using it or anybody else using it at the range. So please let me know in the comment section if you enjoy that little sequence of me going pop, 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 with a bunch of clips put together, or if that really doesn't matter for the for what you what you would like to know about the scopes that I'm, I'm working with. So uh, without further ado, here comes the optic review of um, where you can see how it performs at the the one mile mark, or actually the two kilometer mark. So uh, let me know. Enjoy. As a cheap version or a cheaper alternative for the uh, expensive scopes, I actually think this is quite, quite good. Looking at the target is about a thousand yards out. which is uh, actually not too shabby for, uh, for this scope. When you're looking at the chromatic apparition, that's not too bad either. I like the way the uh, windage comes back to a perfect zero. I like the way the wind, or the elevation, Got a bunch of elevation in there, which also comes back to a good zero. So overall, I'm uh, actually quite impressed with the uh, with the Arkin SH4 Gen 2. I like it. It's uh, it's sharp. It's crisp. If I were to say anything about the uh, the way the the whole thing is set up. Um, the light could be a bit brighter. That is on max. That's six power. And it's hard to see even at max zoom. So that would be nice if that was a little bit brighter. I know that it's not really necessary for, for regular daytime shooting, but it's just, it's nice to have. And also the zoom is very stiff. I would uh, I would prefer that a little less stiff. You don't zoom by accident on this thing, that's for sure. I really like the way the uh, the stiffness of the parallax adjustment on the side is is really good. That's uh, it's got nice good feedback, and I really 
really enjoy the clicks of the windage and the elevation tower or turrets. They're crisp, they're precise, they're nice, they're really, really, really good. It feels and looks really well put together. Um, it all feels like metal. The, uh, the throw lever that you can, you can buy for it is also really good. The mount for it is also really good. If I were to, to choose one thing that I wasn't really a fan of, that would be the nitrogen purge valve down here. I don't really enjoy that it's that pronounced because I can't get it into a spur mount. And that to me is kind of annoying because I use spur mounts for everything. This is what it looks like when we're at the range. I've been uh, running all these scopes for a couple of months now. And uh, <coughs> yeah, the, uh, the Arkin SH4 Gen 2, 6 to 24 by 50, can't fraud it. So, the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 is a very reasonably priced scope. Um, it doesn't quite stack up to the EP5, but it does come in with about the same illumination score, which is four. It's not quite bright enough for, for daytime, but it's really, it's good for nighttime, which is where you need it. It gets the same five for the, uh, for the parallax. Um, it's a little bit. It's, it's good on the stiffness. Stiffness, it could be a little bit, to me, it could be a little bit better. Um, the way you find it, it's a little bit um, touchy on where it wants to be. It only goes from zero to 500 on to infinity, which is, it could be better. The turrets on the uh, Arkin SH4 only gets a seven. And the main reason for that is that there are only eight mils per revolution. That doesn't make a lot of sense when calculating because when you go one full revolution, I'm used to having 10. It would have been easy for them to do 10 on the, on the turrets. So let's hope that the uh, Gen 3, which might or might not be a thing, who knows? Um, hopefully they come out with, uh, with the same turrets as the EP5, which is 10 per revolution. The glass on this is HD glass, so it gets a six. I'm really impressed with the um, light through the through the glass. I'm really impressed with the lack of chromatic aberration on this. I'm impressed with the uh, with the picture quality that you can also see that you've seen already. Um, the zoom on this gets a five. Equally, it's too taut for my liking. These are all my thoughts and what I would score them as and overall I'm still gonna give this an 8 um, it's still for the price it's really really a good contender for a reasonably priced scope you still get a 34 millimeter tube you get a bunch of, of um, elevation in there you get an illuminated reticle you get zoom you get I mean you, you really get a lot for 300 bucks on this thing and it comes with a standard throw, uh, sunshade and turrets. I, I still really, I really like these clicks. So, well, that's all for the um, SH4 Gen 2, 6 to 24 by 50. Until next time, stay tuned and stay safe. Ooh, by the way, please like, share, and subscribe. That's what keeps me going. Bye.